Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make a Pano HDR in Lightroom CC. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli, I am a French photographer living in the beautiful, the incroyable, the amazing city of Paris, France and the very sunny city of Los Angeles, California. And I usually make one to two tutorials per week, but over the last week I was shooting a movie as the lead actor and one of the producers called The Hollywoodans. I had the time of my life, the movie is going to come out in a few months and I hope you will like it. But I'm back, I'm back to do some real tutorials and if you want to get the raw file of this episode, all you have to do is click on the link below here. That's going to give you to my website where you can subscribe to my daily newsletter. On this daily newsletter that you will receive every day, you will get one daily tip and you will get tons of good promotions on my full tutorials. And or you can click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to talk to you about doing Pano HDR in Lightroom CC. It's a really cool trick and I want to give you and share my thought with you on this subject. All right, mesdames and messieurs, so in this episode, I want to talk to you about um, this incredible ability to do panoramic HDR in Lightroom CC and to do this with just one raw file. And that's something which is, I think is pretty crazy. It doesn't work all the time, but I'm going to give you an example. So this is an HDR photo I shot. This is a normal exposure. This is the underexposure and this is the overexposure. This is one of the nicest beach in Malibu, Los Angeles called the El Matador Beach, an amazing beach that I really like a lot. And um, I, there was an amazing sunset and I like that rock. So I wanted to take a panorama, but an HDR one. So I took another set of three photos, which is the, uh, which is sorry here. So that's the top of the rock. That's the underexposed, that's the normal. And that's the overexpose. And as you probably know, with Lightroom CC, you have the ability to create super raw files by combining HDR photos. Now, some people have been complaining that this does not always work well, but sometimes it does, and it's worth giving it a try. So the way you do it is you just select the first three photos, and then you right click and you go to Photo Merge HDR. And this is going to merge all three photos and give you sort of a super raw files with you know all the data from the shadows and the highlights and i think especially good if you don't have like a you know a very very powerful camera if you have like an n3 dslr camera where the sensor it might not be the best in terms of dynamic range this is a useful photo as i said it doesn't work every time but where it gets crazy is you can combine hdr and you can combine panorama you'll see that in a second so the option on the hdr is pretty simple auto align which i would advise you to do auto tone i don't advise you to do because that just mean that he's going to try to correct the image for you. I don't want to do that. And then a deghosting. Now, deghosting can be interesting. You see how the, the water is right now? Because I had three exposures, if I go on no, no deghosting, uh, I can get a different configuration of the water. In, 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 in this case, for example, I got uh, more of a lone exposure look. So I can go for that and I, I can create merge. So that's the result of this 3HDR. For now, it doesn't look like anything. It just has the same file name and it's got the HDR word onto it. But it's a special raw file that now has got the dynamic of three exposures. I mean, of minus two, two, and zero exposure. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the next three photos. So I'm going to select all three, right click, photo merge, HDR, and um, it's going to create the HDR preview. And basically, there is not much options uh, compared to something like Photomatics or I think, uh, you know, MacFun is also coming up with a new HDR software where you have a lot more options. Uh, look at the water here. If you click on on the ghosting, basically because it's different exposure, it's going to give a different look to the photo. Uh, you know, we'll see what it, what goes better. It's going to do that in real time. What the ghosting is, you know, when, when you have moving elements from one photo to another, well, it didn't do much here. Didn't do much. I'm not going to do merge because I've already done it and that's the, the result. So now I've got, instead of having six photos, I now got two photos. I got this HDR photo and this is your show. And this is where it gets crazy. Now you can select the first one and the second one, you can right click, photo merge, and this time you can go into panorama. So you're taking two super raw files and you're mer merging them into one panorama, calling an HDR panorama. It's crazy, isn't it? And this is what it looks like. Uh, you've got different way of projecting the panorama. So spherical, cylindrical perspective. And you can probably do that on like, you know, 
uh, a 15 photos panorama where each photo is, is like three exposure you better have a very strong computer because it's gonna because it's trying to do this in real time it's gonna go really fast and perspective is interesting I think I'm gonna go for perspective on this one uh, or I think the first time I went spherical now you went I'm gonna go spherical because I have already done it so this is one version that I did which was probably um, probably a spherical or perspective I'm not sure I will see once I created a panorama because I prepared this in advance and basically so now you have six photos into one can you believe that this is actually six photos and it's one raw file and I have not even started retouching anything yet so I'm just waiting for the the other panorama to come live and then we'll see between the two perspective which one I'm going to pick up okay so that's the other one uh, that's the other one. Oh, I actually like this one. It's 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 less of a vertorama, but that's the result. So this is one photo, uh, but it's actually six raw files. So now I'm going to do my basic retouching, opening up the shadows. But you see now I got a better dynamic range. So even in the shadows, I don't get much noise, and that's because I've got all this you know overexposed photo where you have a. Uh, all this data so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna bring down the highlights and look at the sky now it's crazy it's beautiful it's amazing okay I'm gonna do my white point all right we're holding the alt key I'm gonna do my black point and um, and now I'm gonna search for the white balance I think I'm gonna boost a little bit the exposure just maybe a little bit a little bit and I'm gonna lower this the, the sky so for the exposure for white balance I'm gonna go for shade to see how shade looks like uh, that's probably what it was, was on shade. I'm going to look at daylight. Daylight could be interesting. Daylight could be interesting. Um, I like sometimes to use daylight and then I, I go here and I do a little graded filter over the sky here. Going on exposure, I'm going to lower slightly the exposure and I'm going to add some blue. Yes, some blue. And then I'm going to try to go to shade instead of daylight. Yeah, that's pretty the best way to go. So shade for the overall white balance and just for the sky here, I'm just going to add blue so that we have a little contrast between the blue and uh, the blue and the rest. Okay, uh, clarity, no clarity, maybe even a little bit of minus clarity. You know, I'm not crazy about clarity anymore so much if you follow my tutorials. So even overall, I'm going to do the minus clarity. want to get this sort of, uh, you know, cool look. I'm going to do my black point even more. I think I'm going to go a bit more crazy on the black point. Add some contrast and um, boost even more the exposure. Add some vibrance to bring back some colors. Okay, and I think I want to get that sunshine a bit more crazy. So I have got a little trick for that is to take a gradual filter. And because I'm working with HDR files, there's a lot of hidden information. So I have a radial filter which I'm going to invert and make the feathering the whole way to 100%. And then on this one, I'm going to add some yellow and some magenta. Maybe like this just to make the you know the 500 px look you know the crazy sunset that people seems to enjoy a lot which i really enjoy i'm crazy about saturation now some people think it's criminal and they want to jail me for putting too much saturation but i don't care i am a rebel i am going to persist on doing this okay and then because there is some white water white water is always good to you know take a little brush and make that water pop a little bit by adding a little bit of exposure on the water so that we see even more that you know there was long exposure and it's very nice because long exposure is always nice it always makes something very funny with the water okay that's one version of it uh i think yeah i think i'm going to add a bit of overall contrast but that's a bit the idea maybe not make it so bright voila and that's six raw files into one so give it a try you know start doing some hdr panorama mix that up into one huge super powerful raw file and do some retouching it's crazy it is absolutely nuts and this is something that was not possible before before lightroom cc as i said it doesn't work every time but you will be surprised my friend you will be surprised <laughs>